This story is to be neither an accusation nor a confession, and least of all, an adventure. For death is not an adventure to those who stand face to face with it. It will try simply to tell of a generation of men who, even though they may have escaped its shells, were destroyed by the war. known as Cat, but his full name is Stanislaus Kaczynski. He is the leader of our group and has a remarkable nose for good food and dirty weather, but most of all for food when there is none to be had. My name is Paul Baumer. I am 18 years old. A few months ago, six of us were classmates. Our heads were stuffed with knowledge, filled with ideals and hopes. Joseph Bem, who will study theology. Albert Krupp, who will study law. Friedrich Müller, who will study everything. Franz Kemmer, who will be a forester. Peter Lair, who will travel and make love. We are with our friends, Chodden, a locksmith before the war, the biggest eater of the company. I, Vestus, who dug peat for a living, a good man to have on your side. And Detoy, a farmer who thinks of nothing but his horses, his farmyard, and his wife. For months now, we have fought the French over a hundred yards of earth. They attack our trench. We attack their trench. And then to keep the score even, they will attack our trench once again.
Jimmy. This is late. He's lucky. I'll be all right. I'll be all right. You are our iron youth. Iron youth becomes iron heroes. It is my duty. It is my honor to prepare you for the part you must play in this great war. Our homeland has need of men of character and strong will. It is my duty to prepare your minds so that you will be better able to train your bodies for your Kaiser, for your fatherland, for your God. For upon you rests the fate of the fatherland. And upon the fate of the fatherland rests the fate of the world. Germany is the nation of progress, the nation of culture, the nation of science, the nation of ideas, the nation of Beethoven, of Schiller, of Goethe, Baumann. What is that? A bird, sir. A bird? Yes, sir. A lark? Yes, sir, a lark. Oh, yes, very good. It was on the window ledge. Sir. Mm, this line is... The window. Yes. Very exact. Thank you, sir. <laughs> but you do not come to class to make little drawings or to write little poems or to dream. Do you, Bob? It's done. Gentlemen, you have all passed your examinations. As you know, you are graduating. The time for class is over. The time for duty has begun. You are dismissed. Here, no. Cigarette? No, thank you, sir. Oh, you don't smoke. <laughs> well, <coughs> it is not a good habit. <laughs> But all good habits makes a dull person. Uh, what is it the English say? Uh, all work and no play makes... A dull man. A dull man. Yes, yes, very good. So you see, you have learned something here, after all. There is a time for work, and there is a time for play. You are graduating. The time for play is over. You are a dreamer, Dalmer. Draw little sketches and write little poems. But now you are a man, you have your duties as a man. Have your duty to the fatherland. Will you, uh, will you wait to be called up or uh, will you enlist? <laughs> no, of course you will respond to your call of duty. You will all respond. The entire class will go as one man to serve the fatherland. I know I will be proud of you, Bob. Today is wonderfully good. Every one of us has eaten for two men, and the mail has come. The grasses sway like tall spears. The white butterflies float on the soft, warm wind. How often in the last few days have we all come to the edge of death? Let's not even think about it. Let's just enjoy the world. Everything is new and brave. Red poppies, good food, cigarettes and the summer breeze.
We're going to see Kimmery. your ticket home. You should be grateful to that pain. That's right. In a week from now, you'll be smoking cigars and sitting on Frau Hammerschmidt's front <laughs> porch telling big fat <laughs> lies to Katrina Hammerschmidt. <laughs> We've got you some smokes and a nice piece of cheese, compliments of cat, and your comb is in the tobacco tin. Put them under the bed, please. Hide them. You know, they stole my watch. Friends? Will you be taking these back home with you? Why not? Well, you don't really need boots back home. Maybe we could do a trade. I've got some... No, my mother gave me those boots. Maybe you could lend them to me? No. You'll be home a lot sooner than the rest of us. <laughs> That's right. You won't have to wait for leave now. <laughs> Orderly? Orderly? They don't come. They never come. We'll try to get you someone. It'll be different when you get home. Right, and when you come back, we'll all be together again. We'll be, yeah. we'll be back tomorrow. I'll come back tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you. I'll be back. Yeah, and my watch. Make sure you get my watch. We You think I don't care about France? Of course I care. If I could save his leg or his life, I'd walk over barbed wire to do it. You know that. But where he's going, he isn't going to need his boots. He isn't going to need anything. And my boots hurt. They really hurt. Why should some damn orderly in the hospital get his boots and not one of his friends? He's right, Paul. Could be worse. Begler lost his right arm, which is very much worse. Besides, you're going home. Do you think so? Of course. Do you think so? Once you get over the operation? I don't think so. Don't talk nonsense. I wanted to be a forester once. You will. They... They make wonderful artificial limbs now. 
can do anything. If you find my watch, send it home. You go to a convalescent home. Maybe the one in Klosterberg. Remember how we used to hike up there? Remember the poplars? A stream full of fish. Friends. Friends. When I come back, we go up to the mountains again. You can name all of the trees for me. You tell me all about them. Friends, nothing will change. We be together again. France? France? Kid. Mule. My. Boots. Which one is that? Bed 36, amputated leg. How should I know that? I've amputated five legs today. You see to it. Got one operation after another since five o'clock this morning. You know, today alone there have been 16 deaths. Yours will be the 17th. There'll probably be 20 altogether. We'll have to take him away at once. We need the bed. They're lying on the floor outside. Something. What, Mrs. Keller? Look after Franz. Take care of him. Oh, of course. You course. know how he looks up to you. He will do anything that you ask him to. You know that. Make him stay away from danger. You know how reckless he is. I'll make sure he behaves himself. God bless you all. Maria. Maria. Look after your little brother. I saw you, Sue. You take care. show you how to find food where it isn't. <laughs> Someday when I'm not here, <laughs> it'll come in handy. I mean, when you're not here, you'll always be here. Uh, here always isn't a long time. <laughs> but anyway, you better learn so you won't go hungry. You pay attention to the teacher. What did he say? Well, it doesn't matter. We're free. free. It is time for work, for duty. You will enlist, all of you, together, the entire class. Of course we will. Of course. Ben, you too. Well, they might not accept me, my eyes. Oh, they'll take, ah. they'll take us all. <laughs> yeah, but not tonight. Tonight we get drunk. <laughs>
Good morning, my fine young gentleman. My name is Himmelstoss. Corporal Himmelstoss. I'm your training officer. You will find I will be a very good teacher to you. Do you know why? Because what I teach you, you will never forget. Never. Attention! Short at ease! Attention! Right face! Pay for this, Palmer. Rifle, fear pack! No, no, Corporal. You must keep your eyes open, Corporal.
training days are over. You are soldiers now in the Imperial Army, fit and ready to do battle for the Kaiser and the Fatherland. In the front lines, you will understand the value and the purpose of everything you have learned here, everything your officers have taught you. Their ways may have sometimes seemed harsh to you, but you will thank your fine instructors for the lessons they taught you in this camp. They have taught you to be soldiers, to be soldiers in the service of Almighty God, the Kaiser, and the Fatherland. custom to assign one old hand to every new platoon. You are a new platoon. I'm the old hand. 
In training camp, they fill you full of fancy information on how to be a soldier. We're going to work hard to forget all that. I'll teach you practical... Listen to me, boy. I'll teach you practical things, like how to put your diapers on in the front lines, and how to kill Frenchies. You won't have long to wait before I baptize you, but first we're going to give you some hot food, and we'll let you get some sleep, and then I'll take you out on your first patrol. Tonight. be some fireworks. French, she wants to say hello. Now you just stick close to cap and move when I tell you to move. All right, take cover. Take cover. Turn the road. Quick, quick. Oh. Done. Done anything. Killing horses is wrong. It's wrong killing horses. All right, boys. Frenchie's finished with you. Come on, let's go, boys. front for a year. We are soldiers now. We know this place well. We are at home. Only Kemmerich is dead, but we keep hearing about others in our class. Dead. Wounded. Always over every one of us hangs the element of chance. If a shot comes, all we can do is duck, because we can never know where it will fall. I can be smashed to bits in a bomb-proof dugout, or I can survive 10 hours unscathed out in the open. Of course. 
course, every soldier believes in chance and trusts his luck. But no soldier outlives a thousand chances. The rats here are particularly repulsive. They are so fat. We call them corpse rats. They have shocking, evil faces. And even on our empty stomachs, it is nauseating to see their long, naked tails. The bait is hunks of bread, which are so rotten that even we won't eat them. And these rats are so brazen. If we make a pile of rotten crusts, they'll come right among us and try to snatch them away. It's a way to pass the time. feared the most obscene weapon of all. We remember the awful sights in the hospital. The gas patients who, suffocating, cough up their burnt lungs in clots. Better to take your chances in the open rather than stay in the hollows and low places where the vapors settle. recruits give us more trouble than they are worth. Between five and ten of them get killed to every old hand. And they get killed simply because they are so inexperienced. They know nothing, so they die like flies. How long has it been? Weeks, months, years? Only days. Yesterday we were under fire, today we can rest. Tomorrow we go up to the trenches again. Wait, come here. Look, 
You fellas go on inside. Come on over here this way. Easy, easy, easy. Get around, get around up there. <laughs> Somebody eat the liver. I'm on a diet. My old woman would have used lots of bay leaves, basil, paprika, and the stuffing would have been something very special. But all things considered, it was a feast. I feel like a king. Eh, not bad, not bad. Like I say, it's not a bad little war. You never answered my question, Joseph. What question? What'll you do after all this is over? What we'll all do, he'll get drunk. Of course he'll get drunk. Then it's back home and mama and all that stuff. But what else? Well, tell him, Yosef, don't be ashamed. I'm not ashamed. He's going to theology school, be a minister. A year at the front, you haven't changed your mind about a thing like that? Is God still in his heaven? Nothing ever changes that. What about you? Back to the cobbler's bench? Cat? And the children. How many you got? Don't ask. Good thing I'm a shoemaker. <laughs> I go broke just buying shoes. More coffins. Looks like a bigger load than usual. That means a bigger offensive. See how considerate they are at headquarters? They even send us the stuff to fill them with. Come on, get this one down. Pull them up. Did you notch this bayonet? Yes, sir. Who told you to? Back at the training camp. Training yeah. camp, huh? Sonny, if the enemy ever caught you at this, they wouldn't kill you. They'd plump your eyes out and fill them full of sawdust. Nobody uses these things anymore. It's by mutual agreement on both sides. I didn't know. The first time at the front? Yes, sir. Don't serve me. I'm a private. Sorry, I thought... Don't think. Just listen. Yes, sir. Your spade is better. You hit a man under the chin with a spade, you can take his head right off. It's a good club, too, because it's heavy. You hit a man between the neck and the shoulder, right here. Then split him one right in two. Mother of God. And it's cleaner. Bayonet gets stuck in a man's ribs, and you have to kick him to pull it out. The time it takes, you're a dead man. Understand? See? Now, where is your platoon leader? Corporal Himmelstadt said he would meet us here. Ah. Corporal who? Himmelstadt. From Oldenburg Training Station. Yes, sir. I don't believe it! <laughs> Vengeance is mine! How did the little pig mess up his playground? Now, don't tell me he volunteered for frontline action. Oh, no, sir. He got into trouble. He overdid it with a couple of trainees on the muddy field. You know the muddy field. <laughs> Do we know the muddy field? <laughs> he went too far. He almost killed them. And he didn't know the son of the local magistrate was watching. So they sent him up here. Wouldn't you know he'd spoil it for himself? Wouldn't you know he'd go just too far? Oh, Lord. I can hardly wait. <laughs> oh, well, look who's here.
well we meet again. Krupp, isn't it? Remember me, don't you, Corporal Himmelstoss? Muller, you here too? Oh, yes, I remember you very well. There? Ben? Baumer? Oh. Baumer? <laughs> Nothing wrong with my memory, you see? Well, I told you that what I taught you, you would never forget. I see you've all managed to stay alive. I'm not Kemmery. Kemmery? I don't remember Kemmery. The rest of you seem to have learned your lessons pretty well. Here's a lesson for you, Himmelstoss. When we get to the front, don't you turn your back. What did you say? So this is the great Corporal Himmelstoss. And who are you? I ask you a question, soldier! Himmelstoss. There's a latrine down the road. Why don't you take a jump? Do you realize that I'm your superior officer? Do you want to be court-martialed? <laughs> Stand up straight, put your heels together, and your superior officer speaks to you. I love you! Scott! Attention! Right! Face! Right turn! Forward! March! Get used to it. They always shell us like this before a big offensive. The idea is to soften us up so we can't sleep. <laughs> then when they attack, <laughs> we won't be able to fight back because we're too tired. Two days and nights. How much longer? Not too long. Not too long. Why don't they stop? <laughs> <laughs> Just relax. Just wait. It'll be over soon. Come on, sit down. Have a seat. Just relax. do we lie helpless, waiting destruction. We can destroy and kill, to save ourselves and to be revenged. When we see their faces, we become wild beasts, 
We turn into thugs and murderers, and to God only knows what devils. If your own father came over with them, you wouldn't hesitate to fling a bomb into him. hot and the dead lie unburied. The shells will bury them, but when the wind blows towards us, it brings the smell of blood, which is heavy.
Je vous help. I want to help you. Kill you. But you jumped in here like that. What would you have done? It's just I've never met you before. Like this. Face to face. I just saw your rifle. all those away. We could be brothers. But they never want us to know that, do they? They never want us to know. We each have mothers. Fathers. Fear of death. Shame. 
pain. The same. Everything. Everything. Forgive me, comrade. your family. Yes. Yes. All right. Gérard Duval, compositeur. I have killed Gérard Duval, the printer. Commander, sir. Your Majesty, I have the honor to bring you the salute of the 150th Infantry Battalion. Your Majesty, Soldier Bernard.
officers, non-commissioned officers, enlisted men. The men who have received decorations this day have all performed actions worthy of our great cause. Henceforth, Germany expects each of you to follow their example. From this day on, your Kaiser urges you all to aspire to such strength, to such bravery, to such obedience to your God and your country. If you do, my soldiers, I am certain that every one of you will one day wear a medal pinned on you by your Kaiser. You have all done your duty in the noble tradition of the German body. You have shown the world our might. You have stricken our enemies with fear. With God's help, you are winning a glorious victory for the fatherland. It's going to take six weeks to get down to the sea. Yeah. Meantime, can I have a piece of that soap? Yeah. Where's the water? Oh, it's beautiful. Come on in. Hey! Look at that! Hello! Hello! Bonjour! Bonjour! Hey, Jolie! Jolie! Somebody hey. do something, just say something, anything, just don't let them get away! Hello, oh. Mademoiselle! <laughs> Hello, Mademoiselle! Attendez, s'il vous plaît! Gentlemen, come over! Um, ah, uh, yes, ah, uh, Mesdemoiselles, you come over this side! We, ah, uh, vous venez, we, ah, uh, s'il vous plaît! Bad piece of luck that there are four of us and three of them. Mm-hmm. Bad luck. See, I just don't think it's fair to the girls. Drink up, Chardon. How often do you get good French wine? Not fair to the girls. No. One of us will have to make the supreme sacrifice. Hmm? Bottoms up, Chardon. You're not keeping up with the rest of us. Close it. Maybe we should draw lots. You lose.
Il y a des chaussures. Bon, il est vraiment plus allemand pour savoir faire du saucisson. Oh, mais t'as vu leur pas, c'est vraiment dégueulasse. Leur papa va te filer à du pain, c'est toujours. This looks like the right lineup, huh? I'm off for this one. You like yours, Albert? Yes. Tu comme une trompe. Oui, là, il y a une qui. On a vu la tête de celui qui en face de moi. Je dis, on se croirait elle est là. Non, on lit. Bon, mais ça y est, hein. Qu'est-ce qui arrive T'es blanc comme neige, toi. Euh... Est-ce que je me trompe, petit bonhomme Oui. Ah, <rire> oh, ridicule la réponse. Petit soldat. Viens. Viens. Non, non, ici. Quel âge as-tu ouais. Ton âge. Non. Quel âge as-tu? Ah, I'm 19. I'm 19. Uh, mm. uh, 19. Uh. <rire> 25 ans? Vraiment, ça m'étonnerait. Tu exagères, non?
little rice so you could get hungry. Bread and cheese. You could find a lobster dinner in the middle of the desert. <laughs> Albert and I are in a Catholic hospital. This is a piece of luck, because the Catholic infirmaries are noted for their good treatment and good food. We were wheeled in the night before, directly from the train, and none of us has slept very well. See him again. Why not? They've taken his clothes. That means he's off to the dead room. Dead room? What's the dead room? The dying room, whatever you want to call it. It's, uh, it's a little place in the basement. Whenever anybody wants to go there and say goodbye, world, goodbye, life, they take him there. Well, it's convenient, really. It's next to the mortuary. No one ever comes back from it. The beds empty quickly and the new occupants take their places. It is going badly with Albert. He's in much pain. And last night, one of our ward mates awakened with a severe hemorrhage. He has been only semi-conscious today. The doctors look in more often. Why didn't you leave him alone? You are doing so well, Paul. Soon we'll throw away the cane. Sister. Yes? I'm worried about my friend. I think 
he is making a very good recovery. Well, he worries me. Since the operation, he... He's in a terrible state of mind. He hardly speaks to me anymore. There is always such a reaction after an amputation. Always. Now, stop worrying. Albert will get over it. Go, tell him your good news. That should cheer him up. Albert? How do you feel? Albert, they're giving me 16 days convalescent leave. I'll be going home. They'll be sending you home, too. Albert, is there anything that I can get you? A gun. A what? You want to get me something? Get me a gun. Are you going to get me a gun or not? No! Don't talk nonsense. No. You talk sense. Albert. I'm sorry. You tell us you were coming. Mother! Mother!
She's in bed. She's sick, Paul. What is it? We don't know. But Dr. Bredemeyer thinks it's probably the cancer again. Are you wounded, Paul? No. No, I'm I'm just on leave. Oh, Paul. How are you feeling? I'm going to try to get up a little today. I think. Good. <laughs> where you are. Well, not always enough, but we manage. Is it very bad there? No. Not so bad. Uh, Heinrich Bredemeyer was here and said it's terrible out there with the gas attacks and all the rest of it. Let's just talk. Just talk. Look at me. I'm well and fit, aren't I? Yes. But then... I still don't understand why you want to take off your uniform. It's just more comfortable this way, Father, that's all. But I... I want to show off our soldier boy to the fellows at Maxwell's. With you, eh? I suppose, in a way, Mr. Zahn. Have a cigar, my boy. No, thank you. If you're old enough to kill Frenchmen, you're old enough to smoke. <laughs> Hans, another beer for our young warrior. What's the spirit like out there, Paul? Excellent, huh? Mm -hmm. I can believe it. The thing to do now is to finish off the froggies for good. The enemy has many reserves, Mr. Hollerstein. The war may be a little bit different from what people think. You're right in the middle of it, Paul. You see your little sector. Sometimes you lose sight of the large picture. The important thing, as I see it, is the breakthrough here in Flanders. This is Frenchy. This is us. What we have to do is come round from the Belgian side and ram through. There's no other way. How can we do that before we beat them on the Hindenburg line? It is borders that are important in this war. Nonsense, you're quite wrong, Barbara. A good soldier never stays planted on a border like a turnip. He advances. I agree with Ludwig. Offense is a key to modern warfare. Look what happened in 1870. Nonsense, sir. We are talking about modern warfare, not something that happened 50 years ago. You're lying to me, Paul. I know that you are. I swear to you, he died instantly. Promised me he wouldn't get hurt. Mrs. Kimmich, I never. Why are you living then when he is dead? Why? What right have you?
Did you see it? Yes. I was right there next to him. He died at once, and he never suffered. I know that you're trying to comfort me. But don't you see that it is harder this way than if you told the truth? I want to know the... I want the truth! I have to hear it. Mrs. Kimry, I promise you that's exactly how it happened. He died immediately. He felt absolutely nothing at all. His face was quite calm. Do you swear it? Yes. By everything that is sacred to you. By everything that is sacred to me. He died at once. And do you promise? Never to come back, if it is not true. May I never come back? If he wasn't killed instantly. Carry that lesson with you to the front lines and you will be better soldiers in the service of the Kaiser. You are dismissed. <laughs> has lost a leg. Uh, oh, Albert Croft. I don't know about all the others. Uh, we were separated, but Lair is alive, and Miller is alive, and I'm alive. I'm glad to hear that. <laughs> tell them, tell them I'm proud to have taught them to be good Germans. To know that you have all done your duty by the fatherland. <coughs> Can you imagine how that makes me feel? <laughs> You're a good class. Good boys. Good boys all. In this class? Well, this lot. <laughs> Not like you. Defeatism has infected them. They haven't got your spirit, Obama. Not the iron youth. Hmm? I'm sorry. No I... iron heroes, sir. Just boys. Want to play. Laugh. Just stay alive. Only boys.
Mother, it's late. You should be asleep. Did I wake you, dear? I'm sorry. You'll catch cold here. Go, sleep. I can sleep enough later. Are you very much afraid? No. I would like to tell you to be on your guard against the women in France. They are no good. Mother, where we are, there aren't any women. And be very careful at the front, Paul. Yes, I will. I pray for you every day. I know, Mother. Perhaps you can get a job that is not so dangerous. Yes, uh, perhaps I could get into the cookhouse. That could be easily done. You do it then. And if the others say anything... Oh, I won't let that bother me. I must go to sleep, Mother. Come on. Mother, I used to live in this room. All my things are here, all my books, my beloved books. But they no longer speak to me as they used to, for I am no longer what I was when I lived in this room. I am a soldier. My business is not reading. It is killing. My knowledge of life is limited to death. And I know now I should never have come back. Out there, all men think as I do. There is no argument about the meaning of life because it has no meaning. My companions at the front are the only truth I know. They are now my books, my family, my life. I depend on them and I depend on nothing else. Mother, it's a terrible thing to say, but I feel I am now going back to my real home. Lasted two hours.
food to our comrades at the front. There isn't much. We are all going hungry. We are all tired. We are all hopeless. But the war goes on. Why don't they just let it end? Ah, who knows? We're finished. We're starving in the froggies and eating corned beef and white bread. Our bread is nothing but sawdust. <laughs> you see anybody hasn't got dysentery and colic? Artillery's burned out. Damn barrels are so worn down. <laughs> the shells are falling short, and half the time our men are being killed. Got no horses left. There's just too many of the enemy, that's all. They got too much. Too many guns, tanks. Now the Americans are pouring in. New guns, airplanes, fresh troops. Thank <laughs> you. 
beard yourself. Stone dead. No. It's his shin. He's fainted. Come on, cat. Come on. We were talking. We wait for peace. Dear Albert, I write to tell you you and I are the last ones left. Soon after Cat died, Chodden got it. A quick and merciful death. A bullet in the head. Himmelstoss was killed the same day. And now, Datering is gone. I think we started to lose Datering last spring, when the apple trees came into bloom. You know that expression of his in the springtime. Two weeks ago, he was missed at roll call. Nowhere to be found. A week later, we heard he had been caught by the military police. You and I know where he was going. Home to the harvest. We have not heard anything more. But you know the penalty for desertion. Albert, of the class of 1916, out of the 20 who enlisted, 13 are dead. Four are missing. One is in a madhouse. You and I live. How I miss you.